Well, here we are, Genetic 6, and we're going to be talking about coat color in horses. And it's not as easy as some people say. It's straightforward in some manners and some other ways it's not. But I just want to say there's about seven loci, and I've got seven loci there designated by two different alleles, right? Because every locus in this case has two alleles. And then there's another seven that might be called the style genes, which I'm not going to mention. But the point is, look at there's about 14 loci. Remember, loci, L-O-C-I is the plural of locus. But there's seven or 14 basically loci that control color total. As a kind of a informational illustration here. I think some people aren't familiar with hands and horses. When somebody says, my horse is 12 hands or whatever, please be aware that hands is four, one hand is four inches. And this cute little girl there is coming up right up to the belly of the animal, the sternum maybe. And uh, it's my way of saying, here's something simple before we get into these genetics. I will go this through this kind of fast because I don't want to like make it drag out too far, but I'm starting on the far left of this genotype where it's the, the W, the white gene. And it's very interesting if the genotype of the foal or the embryo, probably I should say, is large W, large W, that embryo will die in utero and there'll be no animal born. Okay, so it's called a lethal white there's some other things if you look, there's ovaro white, it, it's very kind of confusing, but in my case, if it's large W, large W, it's a lethal thing. Now, when you have large W, little w, like in my genotype up here, that horse will be born white and will always be white. And no matter what the other geno alleles at the different loci say the color would be, it won't show up. So this is a great example of an epistatic effect. One large W, it makes the horse white, and everything else that would have shown, if it was small W, small W, is hidden. So these white horses uh, lack pigment in the hair and skin. The skin is, tends to be pink. The hair is white, sometimes wrongly called albino. In fact, most of the references I saw said, Albinos don't exist in horses. It hasn't been documented. There's confusion because these horse, these white horses with the large W, little w might look like al albino. But the thing is, most of the time, they have brown eyes or blue eyes. And albinos lack pigment throughout their whole body. So maybe that's true. There are no albino horses. Okay. Then, if you have the genotype little w, little w, then all the other colors will show up. Well, no, I shouldn't say that, but other colors will be allowed to be expressed. So up here in my genotype, if this was little w, little w, then we end up going to the next locus, which is the G locus, which we'll be explaining shortly. So then let me show you my picture of a white horse. Almost looks albino, and I can't quite get close enough, but I think the eyes are maybe blue in that case. The website I got this from said this is a white horse. I'll believe it. Now we're going to do the next locus in my diagram there, the G, the gray gene. If the horse has a genotype, and I'm over here now, large G, large G, or large G, little g, so there's at least one copy of a large G, then the horse will be born with color dictated by its other loci, but it will turn gray, or you could call it silver, over time. And then the other colors will be hidden. But it's born with color and grays slowly over time. If it's born, the horse is born with a GG, then it will be kind of like showing its other colors, but then it will never be gray, okay? So little g, little g will be not a gray horse. And I 
want to show you some of these. Here's a gray horse, and you might say, how about the other things that are going on with the horse? Remember, there's 14 total loci, but this was a horse that was born a certain color. I'm not sure. I don't remember what it was in the reading, but it turned gray over time. That's the sign of at least one capital G in its genotype. Okay, here we are. We're going to talk about the E letter, the E gene, which is called the extension gene. And it, along with the A gene, kind of work together. So you'll see that my pictures will come after I get those two discussed. What ends up being if the genotype of the horse is large E, large E, or large E, little e. Okay, now I should say, hey, by the way, it would have to have little g, little g, little w, little w for this stuff to be expressed, right? Because let me go back up here. The white gene is epistatic to everything else. The gray gene is epistatic to everything downstream that way. So for these points to be true, this up here would have to be little w, little w, little g, little g. And we'll show that later. Okay, so here we are. This horse with this genotype is a solid black color or the black is at the points, and we'll talk about it because it depends on what the next locus is doing, the A locus. So kind of hold your breath on that. If the horse is little e, little e, then the coat is chestnut. And chestnut is another name for red. So we're going to go through the A gene next, and then you'll see some pictures. Okay, here we are. We're doing the A gene that sometimes calls, some people call it the Ogudi gene. Uh, you know, it's basically the distribution of the black. So if you have large A, large A, or large A, little a, and then the horse has at least one E, then the black is sent to the points, and we'll be showing pictures of that. Okay, the points are the mane and the, the feet and the tail. If the genotype is little a, little a, and the horse has at least one E, then the entire horse is black. Okay? And I, I've got other things to show you this. <laughs> Hold on. So then, little e, little e, and little a, little a is a chestnut. There's no black. Okay? Because black would have to have at least one large E in it. So if it's little e, little e, little a, little a, that's a red horse, but I've got some more examples coming up. So now I want to show you some examples of how the extension gene interacts with the agouti gene. Okay, so up here, I'm up here in the far upper left. If you have at least one large E and no A's, what that says is you're going to have a black horse. Remember, my dash here means it doesn't matter if it's a large E or a little E. So we've got an all-black horse. There's a beautiful all-black horse. Okay, and I'll try to move these around and get this guy up here, move this over a little bit, and I'll be moving something else around. Okay, so then let's do large E blank large A. Okay. Now, some people call that a bay horse or a black bay because with the large A, that has sent the black color, the distribution, to the points. And I like this picture because it talks about the points, the ears, the mane, the legs, and the tail. That's the points. It's kind of like this black horse over here, but let's... let's push all the black away from the body itself and that's what you get it's called a black bay okay and maybe I'll move that up there maybe get that right by it then we've got this chestnut and so there's little e little e and little a little a in my example but really the the genotype is this if there's little e little e then there's no black to distribute. Okay, that's the kicker right there. No black to either leave on the body or point it to the uh, points. So then you get a chestnut horse. 
And somebody would say, man, that's a really, really red chestnut. That's true, but there's your chestnut. And the genotype of that horse is lily lily. And then we don't care about the A because there's really no black to distribute. Now I'm going to speak fast because I don't want to take too much time on these other loci, the cremella or cream gene, that's the C. If there is a large C, large C, then that locus doesn't have any influence on the color. But these other two genotypes has effects, and you'll see a chart coming up later. I did not want to get into it because there's a lot of little provisos. And again, I don't want to get deep into it, but the D locus here, and I've got one large D, one small D, that's called the Dunn gene. Okay, then the TO up above, directly above my Tobiano gene word, that's what that locus stands for. It's called the Tobiano, Tobiano gene. Now I'm just going to introduce this Punnett square and then let you work it if you want. But here's the genotype of the dam. Remember, I always put the dam on the left side, and then the sire is here. And you would see, you would end up getting a 4 by 4 square. And briefly, what you can see is you get a black horse if there's black, but there's no extending it to the points. If you have the black gene, at least one large E, then it gets extended to the points, and that's called a bay, or you could call it black bay. And then if there's no black, no large E any place, and my laser pointer doesn't show up there, then it's called a chestnut. So it's a beautiful example of a Punnett square where the two parents are heterozygous for the traits, and then you can see the possible offspring, their genotypes and their phenotypes. That's a beautiful Punnett square. Now, I included this illustration just to show you some uh, color patterns. And I'm not going to go through this, but see how I would disagree with this? This is the white horse, not the albino. And then there's gray and there's all these other things. And black is a basic color and chestnut is a basic color. And then bays can be rather dark or light. And it goes on from there. Okay, now this is... A really important illustration. This goes through those seven genes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to enlarge it so you can see the top four. And then you can pause it if you want to read it. But there's the W, G, E, and A gene. And it's big enough that you can pause it and read it. Now I'm going to scroll it up and show you the, the bottom three. And the reason I kind of kept it short earlier. You can kind of see the little provisos. Uh, what actually happens depends on some other genes, loci. Okay, and like that last illustration that was beautiful on the, on the seven loci, this one shows you some genotypes with the, the colors, and they kind of abbreviated things. So what they're saying up here is if you have at least one W, it doesn't care. It doesn't matter what the other genotype is because it's epistatic. You're going to have a white horse. If there's little w, little w, they probably should have put that in here. And then one large g, then you get a gray horse. Remember, the gray horse is born with whatever color it would have been, and then it turns gray. And then you can read these other examples. I wish I would have put the w and the g genes way over here because they are epistatic. But if they're showing any color you automatically know they're little w, little w, little g, little g. But pause that, read it, it's good. That last figure and this one, illustration, really kind of tell you how it all works together. And here are the list of those beautiful illustrations I use, especially the horses. Thanks a lot. See you next time.